This is my sportsman's inverter generator. Basically, the only reason I'm making this video is because I tried to get information about it online from YouTube about different people, and all I was able to find were unboxings and people telling me about how much they do or don't like it. And I, I just, that wasn't what I was trying to see. I had a, had a bunch of different ideas for it. And uh, so I'm going to try something different. I'm going to, I'm not going to give you any opinions on it. Just going to take it apart. Let you see what's inside of it. In case you have ideas like I do. Like I said, I'm not going to give you my opinions. I'm not going to tell you the different ideas I have. But we're going to take it apart and see what the inside looks like. In case you have one and you were wondering what certain parts look like and can you find them. So I'm going to try to do this pretty much live, but all I have is my cell phone. So I'm going to take it apart, and if I don't have the right tool with me right now, I'm just going to pause it, go get it, and then come back. Uh, the only two things that I've been able to see that I need so far is a standard Phillips and a, and a 10 millimeter socket. Um, so this is the one cover. I'm going to flip it around. This is the other side of the cover. This is brand new out of the box. And I know there were a couple videos about people not knowing how much oil to put in it. Mine's brand new. And it actually says 7.5 ounces. And that's what all the new ones are coming out. And I don't see anything different amongst the different videos. So I, I think... I think 10 ounces, what it was saying to do, was a was a bit extreme, and even where it says to fill it to, doesn't say all the way up to the top of the threads anymore. If you notice, it says to uh, basically the full on the stick, so 7.5 ounces. But like I said, this thing's brand new. I haven't put any oil in it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and try to take the side panels off. That's the simple thing to do, which just screws on either side. So I'm going to pause and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I got... Here, one second. See if I get it focused right. Now I got the side with the choke and the pull start on it off. And this is the other side. They don't really ever show in the, in the videos, which has the fuel tank in the other side of the motor. So now I'm going to pause it and take this off and the fuel cap and the rubber gasket. The rubber gasket just pops off too. Um, I'm taking this apart for the first time just like you guys so if it seems like I'm struggling I am. So one second. Okay so now I got the top panel off that allows you to get to the spark plug and if you look, it takes a little bit of pulling, but the rubber gasket around this just pops off. There's nothing truly holding it on. It's just uh, it's just got plastic things you tuck the rubber behind, as you can see. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna take some of these bolts loose to see if I can get the side panel off. Okay, so on this side, there were two 10 millimeter bolts or, or uh, yeah, nuts right here with a rubber gasket behind them. There was a silver screw here, and there were two black screws up here. That's all I've taken loose on this side. So I'm going to pause it and do the other side now. On this side, there was a silver bracket that went around this, two screws in it. There was a silver screw here, and there were two nuts on this side with also rubber washers behind it and that's everything I can take loose on this side so now I'm going to pause it and take a look from the front okay on the front top there's a uh, there's a clip right here that's the only thing I've found on the front so now I'm going to take a look at the actual instrument panel see if there's anything I need to do on it at this time, it doesn't seem like there was any screws holding the instrument panel on that actually hold the case on. So I moved to the back, and this piece comes off with just a screw in each corner. 
So I'm pretty sure there's things I have to do on the bottom of it now. So I'm going to flip it on its side and figure out what I got to do. So I'm going to pause it again. So at this point, there's just a screw here and a screw here. And it seems like as you unscrew them, it just releases a nut from up here. So the screw doesn't actually come out. And if you try to get it apart, you're going to end up having to take the screws loose from here and here to get the sides off. But I did notice as I was gently pulling, there's a screw in here you got to take loose to get that out. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it again while I try to get the side cover off. Okay, at this point, there is a hose that you got to take off. Right here, it goes to the, I think it's the intake to the fuel carburetor. And then there's actually one more big one you got to get back here that I'm still working on. But I didn't want to go too much further without you seeing. There's a, one more clamp and then this whole piece will come off. Okay. So once you get the side, oh damn it, here one second. Once you get the side panel off that doesn't have the choke on it, it pretty much just starts to fall apart. Um, this is the, in, I guess, in the inverter portion of it. And you see all the wiring all the way up to the, to the, to the front. I'm going to get it further apart in a second. But um, I'm also once I got this completely apart and uh, have the ability to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get some part numbers to see if any of the parts are actually user replaceable. Um, so, like I said, once I get it further apart, I'll actually get better video, but it's slowly coming apart. The last part that was actually giving me a whole lot of fit was, a. Uh, this is the last clip I got to get off before I can actually just start pulling the sides completely off. And if you actually move the inverter portion out of the way, you can get to it just fine. So I'm going to pause it. So I'm trying to do this with one hand and a flashlight. But once, uh, once you get the gas tank out, the only thing left are these, uh, I think that's, I'm guessing it's some sort of a fuel pump because it uh, has different vacuums running into it. Two of them come from the motor and two of them come from the fuel. So, here, let me see if I can get it better. So, like I said, there's a couple hoses there and you need to remember where you pull them off. And then, right, let's see if I can get to it. There's no way I can get to it because it keeps a, uh, there it is. That's where the actual pumper bulb is. You can actually pull the hoses off that too. Okay, I'm going to pause it. Okay, so as of now, I pretty much got it about 90% about out of its case. So I can actually start trying to see some of the part numbers. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get that deep into it because, I'm hell, I'm already this deep. But the motor itself has this plastic cover all the way around it. And it pulls air through the fan like everybody knows. But um, it seems like it pulls more air from the from the front, bottom, and the bottom of the case. And it pulls it across the, uh, the heat sink for the inverter and pulls it through the engine and blows it out back by the exhaust. Because it's the only way the air comes in. And if you look at the way the, uh, the cases are set up, it actually sucks air from the front bottom. Yeah. So let's go ahead and start with the with the front. So um, I've looked all all over this, and I don't see any part numbers. But I am going to try to go slow and let everybody see because when it comes to grabbing parts from other generators, if you're going to try to fix them, sometimes they share parts, and this is uh, pretty much what it looks behind the back cover. Uh, yeah. and that's the inverter board um, in a second I'm going to try to get a whole lot closer and see if I can find part numbers but that's pretty much the way it looks and it seems to be made by this company let's see if I can get it in there If you can see that, 
I'll look to see if I can find a part number and add it to it. Um, standard little motor. I'll, uh, like I said, I'll see if I can get some more off of it in a second. I did notice that it does have a part number on it. If, okay. Let me see if I can get it closer. That's the number on the actual motor. If Let me see if I can get it better here. That's the motor on the actual, or the number on the actual motor. Um, I'm going to try to get some of the side off of it so we can at least see what the carburetor is. See if that's something that's fixable. Oddly enough, all the issues people have with putting oil in and out of them, once you get all the cover off, looks like there's an oil plug right here. But you would never be able to get to it with, the, with all the other stuff on it. And then... Basically, like I was saying before, uh, there's air gap all the way around the motor, or the muffler. And when it sucks air directly over the inverter, it blows out around the exhaust. Um, like I said, I'm going to pause it for a second and see if I can get to the carburetor. It'd be nice to see if they're actually user-replaceable you know, model numbers and stuff. When you go to take the carburetors... Uh, if there's a cover here, you got to remove, and there's actually a bolt back here, and then there are two 8mm bolts, nuts, that actually uh, allow that to come off. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that off real quick. So this is the actual carburetor on it. I see a couple part numbers. I'm going to try to get in close to them, but I just wanted you to see. It actually looks like it has an, uh, has an actual electrical choke. So... It's weird. There's a... Here, I'm going to set it down. So the choke you control pretty much is on the actual air box. And it's more or less... I mean, it it acts as a choke. I mean, it's right there where the air sucks in. But the carburetor itself has an electric choke. Or maybe a kind of like the... What are they? 6GY motors? Maybe it's just an enricher. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not. I'm not here to to educate anybody. I'm just here to let you guys see because uh, I wanted one of these for a couple different reasons, and I wanted to see if there was even parts available. And there was nothing online that showed you anything about the insides of them. So let me see if I can. I'm gonna pull this hose off, and I, there's a part number behind that. So I'm gonna pause it real quick. This is about as good as I can get on the part numbers, if anybody can make make sense of it, but that's the part number on the actual side of the carburetor, if that helps anybody. I'm going to pause it again. And this is the information on the little enricher, if that helps anybody. Also... I know sometimes gaskets matter. That's what the gasket going to the actual intake looks like. And um, I, I'm pretty sure I can get this thing back together the way it is, but if I take all that plastic casing off, I think it's, I won't be able to get her back running again, even though she hasn't ran yet, right? <laughs> so I'm going to. I'm going to take one more look over it to make sure there's no more part numbers that you may want or may not want. And uh, I'm going to pause it again. I actually did find one more thing, kind of a hologram. It's got a whole lot of information on it, just in case anybody else can use this information. I'm going to see if I can get it clear. Like I said, it's kind of a hologram. It's you got to catch it just right for the light to make the words visible. Okay, I'm gonna stop it now. I did notice the hose that goes into the bottom of the fuel filter. I'm mean the fuel filter going into the fuel tank. Actually, does have a uh, a filter in it. If you look at it, it actually has a 
Okay, it's a filter. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now I'm going to go get the fuel tank, let you take a look at that if it's... Sometimes fuel tanks have issues, maybe, uh, let's see if there's that's user replaceable. So the fuel tank has a, has a strainer in it, just like you guys would expect, as you can see. Let's hold it up so you can take a look at it. Maybe it shares a fuel tank with something else you guys might know. Part number? No. And, uh, fuel petcock at the bottom. Or uh, petcock. Actually, where the petcock connects. Okay. So I know there are haters out there or whatever, but I'm going to leave comments on just in case uh, some people have questions and uh, honestly critique. You and I um, did this on my phone and. Um, Mainly, it was just all the stuff I was wondering about it because um, I, I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I'm not giving you my opinion on it. I'm not telling you what I'm planning on doing with it. Just uh, just letting you make your own decision. I took it apart. Um, there's plenty of videos about how they run, how they don't run, issues they have, issues they don't have. Um, I can tell you that, uh, that there are a whole lot of indicators on it that they were having issues with putting 10 ounces in it. I found this also on there talking about do not overfill it. 7.5 is all you need to put. Everywhere I see on this, they're, uh, they're overwhelmingly making sure that you know not to put 10, uh, 10 ounces in it. But um, like I said, make your own decisions. Watch all the other videos. You didn't need another unboxing video. I figured the... Figured you guys could use a taking apart video. Okay, thank you.